thousand. Um, I think in the UK we've seen um, a kind of growing mainstream awareness of foreign language titles. So a lot of people are watching more foreign language stuff, and it's more. Um, it's more likely that foreign language titles that people see in the cinema um, are contemporary rather than classic. So before, if you were going to the cinema to watch foreign language films, you'd probably go and see like a classic French film or something, whereas probably since the 90s, more people have been more aware of stuff that's coming out because it's been more available over here. Um, that's really been influenced by the fact that um, I think it was in 2000, actually, the Film Council started rolling out digital technology in the UK, and different screen industries, the screen agencies have done that worldwide. So the fact that we now have digital technology means that um, people are accessing cinemas are able to access um, a much wider range of content. Probably for UK cinemas, the biggest change has been digital projectors. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the film industry... The model is kind of a chain which starts, um, well it starts with the writer, then it goes through the production company, um, it then goes through kind of market, so they sell the rights and film that's been made to a distributor, and then the end of the chain is the exhibitor, which is the cinema, well really the end of the chain, the chain is the customer, I suppose. Um, but yeah, any, any change anywhere along the line, you feel that, probably a bit further on, so for example, there was a writer's strike about 18 months ago, oh, yeah. um, so that affected us, but not, you know, but not at the time, it affected us, you know, probably six months later when there wasn't as much new content coming out. Um, independent cinemas are different from chain cinemas because they're programmed in a much more bespoke way, so, um, you know, we think very carefully about the films that we show, um, we have a more kind of nuanced understanding of our audience, whereas a multiplex, they just know what they're going to show and they know vaguely what their audience is, but because it's so big, um, I guess they cater for, you could say they cater for different, a different demographic. Also, yeah, so more care goes into our programming. Probably we're more community-minded and we feel like we have a remit to support smaller films, whereas a multiplex is really, you know, they're just there to make profit, so they don't have as much integrity in supporting, you know, films. Like, we will take a risk on a film that we know might not make that much money because we think it's important that people see it, whereas a multiplex wouldn't do that. Well, one very important thing about the Lexi is that we run by volunteers, so we're a social enterprise, um, which is different from a charity. It means a business which gives which gives 100% of its profits to charity. Um, so I don't know of any other cinemas that do that. That's something unique about the Lexi. Also, we're very small. We're probably one of the smallest cinemas in the UK. Um, that kind of sets us apart. Um, and we also do pop-up cinema screenings. So most businesses are either like a cinema or a pop-up business, but we do both. Um, that's unique as well, I think. Okay, um, so before the Social Council was set up, the BFI was, um, um, as well as being a kind of cultural establishment for film in the UK, it was also a major funder. Um, then the Film Council was set up in 1999. Um, and the BSI just became, you know, they were promoting talent, but they weren't funding it anymore. Now the Film Council has been shut down. Um, the BFI has actually gone back to taking on more of a funding role. So in terms of supporting British talent, I think they've probably supported British talent more through developing filmmaking talent, like directors rather than actors and stuff. So they would support the production and the exhibition of the film rather than, you know, the actors and the people in front of the camera. Oh, it's massively improved. I mean, now there's like a really um, new and growing trend in cinema at the moment. It's for kind of more of a luxury experience. So that started with groups like The Everyman, now being taken on as well. Probably all of the independents aiming now to give more of a kind of customer focused experience. So if you go to Curzon, they're like, their program is slightly traditional art house, but they're now, you know, the wine now, the seats are very comfy and they make a big deal about that. And you're even seeing multiplexes, new multiplexes will always have like a luxury section, yeah. which they didn't before. So um, that's like a big, a big trend and I think it means that generally it is more comfortable for people to go to the cinema. Because so many people watch films at home now, I think cinemas need to offer something as well as the film. Yeah. It's like more of a focus on experience. Um, 
and it's that means that the business model has changed as well. So the business model at every man for the man is that there's no point putting a lot of marketing into um, getting more people to come and see the film. Because, you know, you can try as hard as you like, but if the song you let people know what's coming on, you're not really going to have a huge impact on the number of people coming to your cinema. But so the place that you should be putting your effort is into getting them to spend more while they're there. Oh, yeah. So every man would rather spend their money persuading people to buy olives and a glass of wine and like gelato or whatever than spending all of that effort maybe getting five extra people to come because you don't really make the money from the ticket price, you make that from um, what people buy while they're there, so like the concessions is called. The main problem facing cinema today, um, I guess the home entertainment industry is always kind of growing and developing. More and more people are downloading films at home either to watch live online or, you know, you can download them and keep them now. I don't know because I'm, like, I'm not that tech savvy, but that's a, that's a huge growing sector, um, which means that distributors are, um, so film distributors, so they're people who own the rights to show the film. It used to be 16 weeks, so it would be 16 weeks before you could buy a film on DVD, and that's, that's getting smaller and smaller all the time. And eventually you'll come down to a point that hasn't happened yet where the film is released on DVD and in the cinema at the same time. So the cinemas are constantly struggling as the windows get smaller to kind of make the most out of films as soon as, they, as, soon as they're released. So that kind of pressure while you have the next 360 of the film, like the window is getting really reduced. So that's like a, that's a major increase in pressure on cinemas at the moment. Also, I guess because of the recession, arts funding is being cut everywhere and that affects, that affects independent cinemas as much as, you know, it affects theatres and people like that. A lot of cinemas are reliant on a bit of public funding. Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, actually, I think the more... It's kind of a myth that the more people buy DVDs and download films, the less they go to the cinema. Um, because I think that, you know, the more people watch films, like, the more people watch films. So, um, you know, there was this debate probably when Love Film and everyone said, you know, it's like a new way of renting DVDs. Um, and I was working for Picture House at the time, and we used to advertise Love Film, and everyone was like, you know, what are you doing? You're at cinema and you're advertising, like, DVD rental, surely they're your competitors. Um, but they um, they commissioned a piece of research which actually found that the people who were renting more DVDs also went to the cinema more because they were just people who got films. So I don't think that's really that's not it's not really a challenge. Um, it's just a change, I think. Um, and you're kind of seeing a renaissance now and people going to the cinema. I mean, cinemas are doing better and better year on year, and especially when. Um, like the financial kind of is quite difficult. Cinemas traditionally do very well in a recession because they're kind of a cheap night out. Um, so, you know, you spend like a ten on a cinema ticket and that's like two and a half hours entertainment, you know. Yeah. It's actually quite cheap compared to going out for a meal.